one of the funnest things of horror films is obviously watching said film and finding out the overall plot of the film and who's the antagonist and whatnot, but there's something that I enjoy a little bit more with horror films, and that's horror film conspiracies. I'm Anthony from the Knights of Horror, and today we're going to break down five horror movie conspiracies you may have not known, or you probably did, but we're going to give you a little light and extension on uh, some of these horror movie conspiracies. So tag along with us. We got some good ones in here. And uh, yeah, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with the notification where every time we put up a new video, smash that like button for more of these videos. And yeah, let's get into five horror movie conspiracy theories. Home Alone is the origin story of John Kramer from Saw. Yeah, right. You're saying already because you've already read the title for this one. You tried to pick two movies with as little in common as possible. Home Alone and the Saw series would be legitimate choices. Only not so fast. There's a fan theory that suggests the Home Alone movies are the origin story of Jigsaw and it makes both franchises so much cooler to think they're linked. Let's look at Home Alone, not as the charming, money-making holiday movie, but for what Macaulay Culkin's Kevin McAllister really is. He's got some serious anger issues, understandably, as he's from a family that pays so little attention to him that they forget to take him along on major vacations. We're not talking about a trip to the store here. Before they even forget him, he's attacked his cousin, though we'll give him a pass on this one. It's legit. Later, he threatens an unsuspecting pizza boy, records his uncle in the shower, and later uses said video for not cool ends. He sets a whole series of elaborate traps designed not just to protect his home, but to do some serious damage to the burglars. Traps that are even triggered by the victims. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? You remember that whole thing as a delightfully clever and slightly hilarious part of the movie, we're sure. But when Dr. Ryan St. Clair from well, Cornell Medical College waited on his professional opinion on just what kind of damage these traps would have done. We're talking some serious permanent damage. Remember the blowtorch in the head? That would cause burning down to the skull and require a transplant to fix. That's right, people. A skull transplant. The iron to the face does just as much damage and that would shatter your face. Now add in his hallucinations, especially the furnace monster, which can arguably be said to make an appearance in Saw 2, and his obsession with the neighbor, who he's convinced is a serial killer who keeps his mummified victims. Heck, Macaulay Culkin and Tobin Bell even look alike. The sacrifice at the end of The Mist was necessary. The ending to Stephen King's The Mist is one of the most gut-twisting things we've ever seen, and it probably came with stunned silence or a bit of cursing when you first saw it. They were so close to being rescued and those bullets, they weren't necessary. If he had waited only a few more minutes and he was going to have to live with that the rest of his life. A good movie leaves a lasting impact and we're, we're betting that even now, you couldn't tell us what you would do if you were sitting in that car in that moment. But there's a theory, one that makes it only a slightly less depressing. <laughs> When the group was trapped in the grocery store, they were joined by the town's resident religious nutter, Mrs. Camity. She went on and on about how they were all doomed, but she said that she needed the blood of human sacrifice and got shot herself when she got a bit too grabby, demanding they be given Drayton's son. You know, the one that dies right before the mist lifts. Miss Camity's demands don't go well for her because seriously, she comes off as completely insane. And what rational person is going to agree to hand over their son to these knife wielding nut jobs? But what if she was right and Dayton's execution of his son was what raised the mist? What if they had handed him over in the very beginning of the film? What the heck kind of God does she worship anyway? The aliens from signs weren't aliens. Signs had such potential, but for a lot of people, it was derailed when the weakness of the mysterious invaders was revealed to be water. The idea that these highly advanced aliens would choose to invade a planet that's mostly made up of exactly what they are vulnerable to was too big of a plot hole for many. But there's one theory that says we're looking at it completely wrong. According to this one, they're not aliens at all, they're demons. The religious overtones are right there from the beginning. 
When we find out that Mel Gibson is playing a preacher who lost his faith after his wife was killed in a random accident. That's the heart of the film, suggesting some things like water glasses left around the house and not Macaulay's asthma aren't random at all. But if they're demons, the glaring plot holes start to close up. It's not just the water that Bo's asking for, it's holy water. Her father says that when she was born, he thought she was an angel. We know that every new parent tells this to everyone who will listen, but there might be something to it in at least one case. Bo's odd name from the old house, Bo, which means to live, and there's that line that everyone laughed a bit nervously at. Ha, there's a monster outside her window and she's thirsty, crazy kids. But it's possible that she might know something that no one else does. In spite of all the talk about losing and finding faith, the possibility they're demons and not aliens also explains a way why they never see any technology. Why there's no spaceships. And why they're on this water-filled world in the first place. We wanted to like signs so much, but we're totally on board with this one. Child, The Thing. The Thing is another example of the genius of John Carpenter. It is a story of men stationed at a research facility in the Antarctic, forced to contend with death and paranoia at the hands of a shape-shifting alien entity. The film concludes with the alleged death of the creature. The two remaining survivors, McReady and Child, sit at a now burned out research facility. Despite their rampant distrust of each other, they pour out some scotch and wait for an uncertain rescue. It's a somber but mildly humorous ending that will never quite dispel the paranoia. It's an ending made creepier by a new theory. Childs could be the remaining imposter created by the entity. Commonly circulated evidence behind this claim are Childs ever changing clothes throughout the film and the possibility of the drink McReady Kurt Russell's character had provided him potentially gasoline instead of water. Whether or not this question was ever intended to be answered is unclear, but it's a testament of the film's lasting paranoia that fans have debated this decades after its release. Dr. Loomis is in Psycho and Halloween. Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho and John Carpenter's Halloween shared some DNA, both figuratively and literally. For example, Jamie Lee Curtis, who portrays Laurie Strode in Halloween, is the real-life daughter of Janet Leigh, who starred as Marion Crane in Psycho. Additionally, Dr. Samuel Loomis, played by the legendary Donald Pleasance in Halloween, shares the same name as John Gavin's character in Psycho. However, fans have speculated that this goes beyond just a fun nod from John Carpenter and could quite possibly serve as a piece of connective tissue between both movies. There's a theory that Sam Loomis, inspired by his dealings with Norman Bates, took on psychiatry. This would eventually lead him to Smith's Grove Sanitarium, where he'd become Michael Myers' doctor for the duration of his life. This would explain Loomis's almost encyclopedic understanding of evil and how unfazed he seems by most of Michael's actions. And those are five horror movie conspiracies I found interesting. Let me know if you like this series. Uh, leave some comments down below. What are some of your favorite horror movie conspiracy theories? And um, we may cover them in the next episode. But until then, like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm Anthony from the Nights of Horror, and we'll see you guys next week.